Elon Musk is rich, outspoken, and kinda insane. Over the last few decades, he's launched, founded, and invested in some of today's most world-changing companies, completely shifting several industries from the financial sector to the automotive industry and even into space exploration. Love him or hate him, there's one thing that no one can argue. He's got the Midas touch, and everything that Elon seems to touch turns into gold. But his story isn't all glitter and paradise. And if you're founding a startup, there are things you can definitely learn from him about launching and growing a super successful business. In this video, we're going to discuss five things you need to do to become an Elon level entrepreneur. The things that separate a multi-billion dollar founder from your everyday business owner and the mentality that you need to have to grow a million, multi-million, billion, or even a multi-billion dollar business. And we're gonna get started right now. One thing startups should take away from Elon is his ability to see things that no one else sees. Whether PayPal, SpaceX, or Tesla, every business Elon started has been met with extreme criticism. It's not needed, it won't work, or it'll never take off. Back in the 90s, nobody thought that one day more transactions would take place online than in the physical world. Back then, if you wanted to buy something online, you would send in a check or a money order. And then a month later, you would finally receive whatever it was that you ordered. We didn't think that anybody outside of the world's biggest governments would make it to space. And we definitely didn't think that one day we would be spending $5 per gallon on gas and looking at electric cars as a potential mass solution. That is, no one thought that except Elon Musk. Somehow, he was able to see where all of these industries were heading and position himself as the pioneer and the innovator. And now some of the same people that doubted him have turned into his largest clients. Neil Armstrong, the astronaut who famously became the first person to step foot on the moon, was one of Elon Musk's idols as a child, and especially in his early space endeavors. But when the media asked Neil about his faith in Elon and his company SpaceX, he said, necessary requirements will be overlooked and there will be problems. It's a project with a mission to nowhere. It's a bad idea. Imagine building something amazing and the one person that you're trying to impress absolutely hates it. But today, SpaceX is contracted by NASA, the same organization that sent Neil Armstrong to space. NASA uses SpaceX to send their crews to the International Space Station. And in 2021, NASA selected SpaceX to land the next Americans on the moon. Anything amazing is going to be met with criticism. And the more game changing it is, the more it goes against the norm, well, the more criticism that it's gonna receive. Back in the early 90s, experts said that the world would never adopt desktop computers. In 1995, Newsweek released an article in their magazine that said that the internet would never catch on. But here you are, watching videos on your computer or your smartphone, connected to high-speed internet, reading articles about Elon successfully going to space, and watching Teslas charge up on the side of the road. Some people will argue that if you don't have haters, then you're not doing anything remarkable. The takeaway here is that when you're a visionary, you're gonna see things that other people just don't see. You'll believe things that other people don't believe. And if you don't let that stop you, then you'll build things that they don't understand. If everyone thinks that you're doing something great, then maybe you just aren't thinking big enough. And that brings me to number four, understanding that failure is part of the process. I'm sure that you've heard the concept of failing your way to success, but if you think that's just a cliche, well, it's not. And failing your way to success is something that you as a startup founder can definitely learn from Elon Musk's story. You can see failures all throughout his career, from the earliest stages even up until now, but you also see how those failures fueled his success. For instance, back in 2000, he had a falling out with his team at PayPal. He wanted to switch PayPal servers from a Unix platform over to one powered by Microsoft Windows, but his co-founders really didn't like the idea. Elon took a trip to Australia, and while he was on the way, he received a call that the other co-founders voted him out of the CEO position. That was the failure part. 
but he remained the majority shareholder. And when eBay bought PayPal two years later for $1.5 billion, he earned $180 million. Now that's the overcoming failure part. And don't even mention the failures that he experienced during SpaceX. In 2016, the company had several rockets and spacecrafts explode. And during the same year, Tesla was struggling to meet its delivery goals. In fact, Elon thought both SpaceX and Tesla would likely end up in failure. He once said, I gave both SpaceX and Tesla a probability of less than 10% likely to succeed. But today, SpaceX has had a ton of successes. They developed the Merlin engine, which is a cheaper alternative than those used by other companies. And they even created reusable rockets, while others could only use their rockets one single time, which is inefficient and ridiculously expensive. In 2020, SpaceX launched its first crew test flight, delivering two astronauts to the ISS. And on the Endeavour SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, they delivered two men back to Earth. This year, they launched 53 Starlink satellites. Without those early failures, none of the successes would have been possible. But those early rockets exploding exposed weaknesses and showed Elon and SpaceX what they needed to fix in order to create something successful. And I'm sure you remember all the failures that happened during the Cybertruck reveal. Like when Elon mentioned that the truck had a bulletproof exterior and then had his lead designer tested by hitting the door with a sledgehammer and throwing a steel ball at the window. He was supposed to be showing that neither of these things would impact the truck, but instead the window shattered, resulting in everyone in the audience and around the world laughing at him. This was in November 2019, and back then it was considered a major fail. Yet by June of 2020, the company had already pre-sold more than 650,000 trucks, and that's a significant win. And along with failing your way to success, there's another thing that you'll have to do in order to win like Elon. And that brings us to number three. You have to be willing to risk it all. Accepting that failure is a part of the process is one thing, but if you wanna be successful like Elon Musk, you have to be willing to risk everything, knowing that it could lead to unrecoverable failure. Now, I'm not saying that you have to risk your whole life to be successful. I'm saying that the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward, but also the bigger the risk, the more significant your risk of failure will be. During the International Space Station Research and Development Conference back in 2015, Elon said, anything which is significantly innovative is going to come with significant risk of failure. But you know, you've got to take big chances in order for the potential of a big positive outcome. If the outcome is exciting enough, then taking a big risk is worthwhile. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Elon is a billionaire. He's been a millionaire since the 90s. So what has he really risked? But don't let your ignorance of his journey make you believe that his meteoric rise was easy from day one. Because during his journey, he took some huge risks. The first business he started was Zip2, which was a searchable business directory something like the internet version of the Yellow Pages. Compaq ended up buying Zip2 for $307 million. And as one of the founders, Elon earned $22 million. And while most people would revel in being a new millionaire, he didn't. Instead, he took $10 million and invested it in X.com. So that's almost half his earnings and really more than half his earnings when you consider that he probably lost 30% of the sale to taxes. If X.com didn't work out, he would have been completely broke again. But fortunately, it did work out. X.com eventually merged with Peter Thiel's company, Confinity, and PayPal was born. In 2002, eBay bought PayPal for $1.5 billion, and Elon Musk pocketed $180 million. He made a big risk investing in X.com, and one wrong move could have put him right back to where he started. So you would think that after selling PayPal, now he's a hundred millionaire and it would be the perfect time to count his winnings. But instead he invested $110 million in SpaceX and $70 million in Tesla, pretty much risking almost every penny that he had earned from the sale of PayPal. Those two businesses have grown his net worth to over $200 billion, making him the wealthiest person in the world. Without risk, there's no reward. 
Now again, I wouldn't advise you to risk everything, but you have to take calculated risks and you have to also understand that everything is a risk. Elon could have lost it all by investing in PayPal, but he also could have lost his entire future net worth by not investing in PayPal. So what are you willing to risk for your dreams? But it wasn't just the willingness to take a risk that made Elon succeed. There was also the factor that maybe we don't give him enough credit for, and that's hard work. And that leads us to number two, working harder than your competition. There's a level of determination that super wealthy people have that the average person just doesn't possess. Now, rest is important. And no, you don't have to work a bajillion hours per week to be successful. However, if you're hoping to be Elon Musk level successful, you'll be working while everyone else is sleeping. It's not uncommon for self-employed people to work more than 60 hours per week. And to most people, that sounds unrealistic. But for Elon, success was the goal and he literally wouldn't sleep until he got there. Tesla and SpaceX almost bankrupted Elon Musk, but instead of cowering down and losing, he worked harder than he ever had before, working between 18 and 22 hours each day on the companies, seven days per week, and 365 days per year with no holiday breaks. He would even sleep in the Tesla factory, ensuring that he was the first person there every morning and the last one to leave every night. The result of those hours is that Tesla became the most valuable car manufacturer and really changed the world's outlook on electric vehicles. It took Tesla 18 whole years to return a profit, and I would bet that Elon didn't get a good night's rest that entire time. While you're sleeping, there's someone else out there that's working. And I'm not saying don't get your rest because ultimately you wanna have the health to actually enjoy your wealth. But what I am saying is that the person who usually becomes the most successful is the person who works the smartest and the hardest while building momentum. If success is really the thing that you dream about, well, you won't really be able to sleep until you accomplish it. And finally, we get to number one. None of us have perfect lives, so you have to learn how to use your traumas as fuel for your success. For many of us, trauma is debilitating. Some of us carry things that happened in our childhood all the way into our adult life, and it prevents us from moving forward. But others like Elon Musk, well, they use their past traumas to fuel their success. It's easy to see wealthy people and think that their lives have always been paradise, but it's not true. Growing up, Elon was teased and bullied relentlessly. There were times that kids would beat him up just because he didn't fit in. And one time he was beaten so badly that he blacked out and had to be hospitalized for an entire week. But there's one aspect of Elon's life that he keeps a lot more private, and that's his relationship with his father. Elon once said about his father, he's good at making life miserable. I don't know how someone becomes like him. He also said, my dad will have a carefully thought out plan of evil. He will plan evil. Though Elon never said it directly, many people have speculated that his father was mentally and maybe even physically abusive. He also said that his father, Errol Musk, never had faith in him and that he reminded him of that fact on the regular. When Elon left for Canada, hoping to take on the world, his dad said that he would be back in South Africa within months in the exact same place that he started. Furthermore, even though we all know that Elon is a high IQ innovator, his dad called him an idiot constantly. And if he would have internalized that trauma held his head in shame the rest of his life and lived a below average existence, we really wouldn't be able to blame him. We would look at his childhood and say that he was doomed from the start. But if you're gonna be successful, and I mean like really successful, then you have to find your fuel. Maybe you grew up poor and your fuel is that you never want to experience that again. Or maybe your teachers told you that you would never amount to anything and your fuel is to prove them wrong. Or maybe your abusive ex-partner told you that you can never be anything without them and now you're destined to show yourself that you can stand on your own two feet. Or maybe your parents died when you were young and making them proud is your fuel. Whatever trauma you have in your life, you have to flip it on its head. Just like Elon, you have to ask yourself, what is my fuel? What is it that will keep me going when I want to quit? And what is the thing that will keep me motivated when everything around me looks like chaos? The fact is, the way Elon built his business is way outside the box. Some of his habits might not even be healthy. 
And I'm not saying that you should do exactly what Elon did. What I am saying though is that if you want to try to replicate his startup success, then you should understand his journey and learn what it took to get him there. Maybe one thing will change your mindset. Maybe one habit will help you progress quicker. Or maybe some aspect of his story will resonate with you and motivate you to launch that business that you've been thinking about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so that you'll be updated every time we drop new content. We drop a new video every week to help you grow and launch your business, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, take care and keep creating amazing shit.